All right, hi guys, welcome back once again to five MCQs in five minutes. These MCQs are all going to be PYQs. Currently, I am on June 2022. Let's see what are the important five PYQs that we are going to discuss. As I have told you previously as well, that through these MCQs, you are also going to revise multiple important previous year topics as well. So the very first question that I'm having today is about 29 year old female with a history of hypercoagulative disorder visiting OPD for anticoagulation treatment. Which of the following drugs should be avoided in the first trimester of pregnancy? Which of the following should be avoided in Inoxaparin, it is one of the low molecular weight heparin. It can be utilized. It's a first trimester. Unfractionated heparin, they are the unfractionated heparin. They can also be utilized. Warfarin, remember guys, warfarin is something that should be avoided in the first trimester. Why warfarin? Because warfarin, as you guys are all aware, that it is actually associated with your bone and cartilage defect. Bone and cartilage defect flat nose karke is make war rata hai flat nose and a cartilage defect bone defect and a multiple abnormality can be seen bone defect is and cartilage defect is the most prominent with the warfarin and we call this term actually as a contradi syndrome so contradi syndrome is mainly associated with which of the following drug the answer is in front of you the name of the drug is warfarin it should be avoided in the first trimester now let me take this opportunity very very quickly and tell me according to american heart association guideline uh, according to american heart association or american college of cardiology guideline nt coagulation during pregnancy in pregnancy if the patient is coming to you in the first trimester 1 to 12 week then you are going to utilize usually unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin however in 13 to 35th week you are going to utilize warfarin always remember whenever we start warfarin it, there should be a bridging therapy of heparin also for five days then in the 36th week we are going to again switch back to your low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin preferably low molecular weight heparin right apart from that once again after the delivery we will be switching back again to uh, warfarin heparin now why we are using warfarin in this one because uh, there are high chances of high or hypercoagulability and remember warfarin is a more stronger anticoagulant as compared to your heparin hai na? so this is the according to american heart association guideline let's see the next question which of the following is the drug of choice in legion as disease atypical pneumonia jitne bhi hain un sabhi ke liye hai na azithromycin is the drug of choice the drug of choice also for chlamydia mycoplasma hai na legion as disease in sabhi ke liye azithromycin is the drug of choice not erythromycin remember erythro and azithro both are from macrolide only vancomycin happens to be the drug of choice in a patient with a methicillin resistant staph aureus it is also considered the drug of choice for catheter associated staph epidermidis infection staph epidermidis infection which is catheter associated tk cycline it is one of the congener it's one of the derivative of minocycline only it's from the tetracycline group only you know tk cycline it can be used in mrsa vrsa but they're not the drug of choice in legionnaire's disease the drug of choice here is azithromycin Next question is about a patient suffering from breast cancer is on chemotherapy taking multiple anti-cancer drug. Cancer is not responding to the low dose therapy and is needed to increase the dose of chemotherapy. Which of the following drugs require monitoring of bladder function, right? Ye kaun se year ka hai? They are all June 2022, right? So uh, till uh, at least 4-5 episodes of June 2022 we will be discussing, okay? So which of the following require monitoring of the bladder function with the increasing dose? Gemcitabine, cisplatine. Cisplatin platinum compound hai na? it is uh, associated with the nephrotoxicity autotoxicity you know? nephrotoxicity is very very common here very specific side effect is nephrotoxicity bone marrow suppression megaloblastic anemia is mainly associated with your methotrexate hepatotoxicity also hepatotoxicity also hai na? crystalluria also this is with the methotrexate but ifosomide remember guys ifosomide cyclophosomide they can cause hemorrhagic cystitis this is a very very common problem hemorrhagic cystitis to prevent this hemorrhagic cystitis we have prophylaxis of mesna so you are supposed to run an iv infusion of mesna so again if you want to have a uh, if you want to have ifosomide and uh, make sure that you are keeping an uh, uh, keeping an eye on the bladder function uh, cyclophosphamide ifosomide both ek metabolite hota hai isko bolte acrolein acrolein is the metabolite okay that is causing hemorrhagic cystitis next one 
a young male patient with a family history of bipolar disorder with his father now come to your opd with symptoms of mania he is genetic testing show positivity for recessive inheritance of gene involved in the mania which of the following mood stabilizer can be given to him as a most effective treatment so simply examiner you would have asked which of the following the most effective for mania guys the drug of choice is going to be lithium for the mania remember a very simple story that i tell you that lithium always act well lithium act well is a very simple you need to remember all the drugs that can be used in mania lithium stand for your li is lithium only lithium only a typical antipsychotic can also be utilized and a typical antipsychotics is the preferred drug in a pregnancy as well then we are having carbamazepine we are also having topiramate that can be utilized and val stand for your valproate do you guys know that valproate is the drug of choice in rapid cycler it is the drug of choice in rapid cycler now who are the rapid cycler anyone who is having bipolar disorder na no? mania depression mania depression so all these age drug, all these patient those who are coming to you and having more than or uh, equal to four episode in a year we call them as a rapid cycler so usme ye drug of choice hota hai hai na once again ghanti baj gaya last question le lete hain a patient of myocardial infarction taking antiplatelet drug aspirin tablet 325 mg uh, which drug can be added to the above treatment to enhance the antiplatelet activity so have you heard about something called your dual antiplatelet therapy in dual antiplatelet therapy we used to give thromboxane a2 inhibitor by the name of aspirin and in addition to this we give a p2y12 inhibitor p2y12 inhibitor by the name of clopidogrel right it is said that this dual antiplatelet therapy is having better outcome as compared to any of the antiplatelet drug again clopidogrel is going to be the correct one not warfarin heparin they are the anticoagulant they are not antiplatelet drug dipyridamol is one of the phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor they are mainly associated with your coronary steel phenomena they are not the preferred with the thromboxane a2 inhibitor i hope all of you guys have enjoyed this 5 minutes 5 pyqs i'll be seeing you in the next session for more such details please don't forget to subscribe like and share with your friends thank you very much